Welcome, welcome. This is Pastor Brian from Chapel of Change, and it is a joy uh, to be connected to you online as we worship, as we pray, and now as we study God's Word. Now, before we get into the Word, I want to remind you that we're having water baptisms coming up in a couple weeks at our Carson campus. Last Sunday, we had baptisms at our Paramount campus, and we had a powerful time. So if you want to be baptized, uh, please contact us so that we can put you on the list. Now, it is a joy to be able to study God's Word uh, with you every Sunday. I love teaching God's Word. I love to know that you're learning and that you're growing. And so as the Lord ministers to you through these teachings, go ahead and write something uh, on the screen or the comment section. Go ahead and write what you're learning on the comment section. And go ahead and share. If you're watching through Facebook, uh, share this so that other people can learn with us. Or if you're watching this through YouTube, go ahead and share it onto Facebook or uh, Instagram so that we can reach more people with the Word of God. Now, I want to encourage you to turn in your Bibles to Mark chapter 5, verses 25. That's Mark chapter 5, verse 25. We're going to continue our series on unstoppable faith. Unstoppable faith. And I'm going to pick up where we left off last week week in Mark chapter 5 verse 25 the scripture reads like this now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians she had spent all that she had and was no better but rather grew worse when she heard about Jesus she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment for she said, she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? Verse 31. But his disciples said to him, you see the multitudes thronging you and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. Verse 34, and he said to her, get these marvelous words. Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Powerful story, powerful event. Uh, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word. Today, friends, as I mentioned, we are continuing our study on the subject of unstoppable faith. Unstoppable faith. And as believers in Christ, we all have the seed of unstoppable faith in our heart. That's faith that keeps uh, pushing forward despite obstacles. What's unstoppable faith? Well, that's faith that keeps trusting God despite of what it looks like. That's faith that keeps on chopping in spite or despite of tiredness. We all, as believers, have the seed of unstoppable faith in our hearts. Now, even though we all have it, uh, the reality is that we're not all operating in that unstoppable faith. We're not, we, as believers, we have the seed of unstoppable faith, but most of us or a lot of us are not operating in unstoppable, unstoppable faith. And so through this series in the month of February, I'm excited to be teaching you some elements of unstoppable faith. I'm excited to help you begin to operate in unstoppable faith. My, my prayer is that in 2021, you operate 
in unstoppable faith. Now, we're going to be learning uh, from the sister in Mark chapter 5 in the passage of scripture that I just read. And this particular sister had a powerful uh, testimony of endurance. She had a powerful testimony of perseverance. And the Bible uses uh, the word affliction uh, to describe her problem in verse 34 it uses the word affliction. Now that word uh, gives us insight into how she was suffering uh, because that word affliction in this particular day comes from the world of torture. That word comes from the world of torture and it denotes uh, the act of repeatedly beating a prisoner. It, it denotes the act of repeatedly beating a prisoner. Once the prisoner's wound healed, uh, the torturer will beat him again and again and again and again. And that word paints a picture of how she suffered, that the Bible describes her affliction as nonstop. The Bible describes her affliction as growing worse and worse and worse. Yet in the midst of her pain, we see uh, this unstoppable faith. We, we see her with this unstoppable faith. We see her with this grit that kept her in the fight. We see her demonstrating this spiritual and emotional stamina that kept her pushing forward and pushing forward until she was able to touch, touch the clothes of the Savior. And we want to learn. We want to learn from her unstoppable faith. I got a couple powerful reflections for us today. And the first one that I want us to consider is that God responds to faith. Write that down. God responds to faith. And I get that out of verse 30 where it says, Jesus turned around. Jesus turned around. I want you to get this picture, this image in your mind. Jesus is on his way to another gathering. Uh, there's a crowd that is surrounding him. People are touching him, but he doesn't stop for the crowd. He doesn't stop for the noise. He stops for one person in the crowd of many. And I want us to think about this for a moment. What made her touch so special? What, what, what triggered Jesus to turn around? Now you gotta remember, Jesus is, is God in the flesh. Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jesus, when he was on this earth, was on a mission to go to the cross of Calvary and he didn't let anything stop him or slow him down. So for him to turn around is very significant and we wanna consider what was it that caused our Savior, the King King of kings and the Lord of lords to turn around. I'll tell you what it was. It was her unstoppable faith. It was her unstoppable faith. And I want to, I want to, I want to bring to the table this morning that God responds to faith. God is attractive, attracted to faith. God is attentive to faith. And we see God responding to faith all throughout the Holy Scriptures. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 20, Jesus encountered a Roman soldier and was amazed at his faith. In fact, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 10, it says, When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. What a testimony that's to have. That the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings was amazed at this soldier's faith. When, when was the last time that God was amazed at us? When was the last time that God looked down from heaven and, and was amazed at our faith in him? In Matthew chapter 15, verse 28, a mother cries out in faith to Jesus about her daughter. 
She cries out in faith. And in Matthew chapter 15, verse 28, it says, Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. Listen, God responds to faith. In Mark chapter 2, verse 5, it says, Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Again, he, he responds to the faith of this, of this group of people. God responds to faith. God loves to see his people daring to trust him. God loves to see his people worshiping him, even though they're in the midst of confusion. God loves to see people uh, seeking after him, even in their, even if they're in the midst of pain. Listen, friends, God responds to faith. Think about it. Think about it for a moment. Could it be that God is not responding to us the way we think he should is because we're not acting in faith? Could it be that that we have abandoned faith and and that's the reason why God is not answering our prayer and that's the reason why God is not uh, responding to us like like he like he should or or, or wants to? Uh, well, if that is you, I got good news for you. You're connected to the to to the right connection. You know why? Because because this is a faith fueling station. Every time we connect online uh, through the teaching of God's word, uh, we're, we're filling you up with faith. This is a faith fueling station. And part of my role as a minister of the gospel is every time we connect online or in person at, on, on worship, in worship, part of my role is to fill you with faith, fill you with faith. Part of my role is to stuff you with fresh faith because I know that God responds to faith. Secondly, what I want us to learn from this sister's testimony is that faith appropriates the power and promises of God. Write that down. Faith appropriates the power and the promises of God. I get that in verse 30. Listen to this. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself, get this, that power had gone out of him. Power had gone out of him. Faith appropriates the power and the promises of God. The word appropriate means to take for one's own use or it means to lay hold of. The word appropriate means to take for one's own use or to lay hold of. This sister, um, when you look at the story, she basically snuck up on Jesus and took from his power. When you look at the story, this, this sister, she had the faith enough to, to sneak up to Jesus and take from his power. Her, her faith took healing from Jesus. And what's amazing is he didn't rebuke her. He didn't rebuke her. He didn't shame her. He didn't get mad at her. In fact, on the contrary, he honored her. He honored her faith. See, her faith was the hand by which she received from God. Look at the story. Her faith was the hand by which she received from God. She appropriated her healing by faith. And Jesus specifically says it in verse 34. Listen to what it says. And Jesus said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Faith appropriates the power and the promises of God. Listen, my brothers and sisters, faith is more than just a passive trust in God. Faith is the hand by which we receive the promises and the power of God in our life. And the Bible teaches this over and over and over again. For example, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 33 the New Living Translation says, 
By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and get this, and received what God had promised them. By faith, they received what God had promised them because faith appropriates the power and the promises of God. I want to take you deeper a little bit. I want you to note that by faith, she made a withdrawal from the supply of Jesus's power. I want to take you a little deeper. I want you to think about this. By faith, she made a withdrawal from the supply of Jesus's power. Jesus uh, was the embodiment of the kingdom of God when he was on earth. Uh, Jesus, when he walked in this earth, had power inside of him. And by faith, she made a withdrawal from the supply of Jesus's power. In verse 30, it actually teaches that the power had gone out of Jesus. Power had gone out of Jesus. Now, that power could have stayed in Jesus. That power could have, could have passed her by. But she made, I want, to, I want you to get this, she made a withdrawal by reaching out to Jesus in unstoppable faith. Apostle Paul, he revealed in Philippians chapter 1, verse 19, he says, For I know that this will turn out for my deliverance, key word, through the supply of the spirit of Christ. I want you to check what he said because he teaches us something, something powerful. He, he's basically saying that there's deliverance in our supply of the spirit of Christ. That word, that word supply means storehouse. It means a reservoir there. And, and I want you to know that there's healing in our supply of the spirit of Christ. There's deliverance in our supply of the spirit of Christ. There's supernatural power uh, available in our supply of the spirit of Christ. In fact, I will dare say and su submit to you that everything we need in life for life and godliness is in our supply of the spirit of Christ. That's good news. That's good news. Look at your neighbor who's sitting next to you and say, we have a supply. We have a supply. Now, listen. What Jesus was to the early apostles is the same thing that the Holy Spirit is to us. I want you to get that. What Jesus was to the early apostles um, is what the Holy Spirit is to us, Jesus taught in Matthew 18, verse 20, he said, where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. The main reason why Jesus had in a bodily form had to ascend to the father is so that he could release the Holy Spirit onto the earth and be our be our comforter and, and, and walk alongside of us. Right. What Jesus was to the early disciples, the Holy Spirit is to us today. And I want to suggest to you that there is a special supply uh, of the Holy Spirit when we gather together, connect together for worship. There's a special supply of the Holy Spirit, of the Spirit of Christ available to us when we connect together for the study of God's word. There, there's a special supply of the Spirit of Christ that is available together when the worship team leads us in worship. There's a special supply of the Holy Spirit. Every time I preach this word and you sit up underneath this word, listen. This is a pulpit right here. This is a pulpit, a pulpit. And when the word is preached, there is a supply of power to pull you out the pit. There's a supply of power to pull you out the pit. That's why, beloved, when we come to church, we don't come to church just casually and nonchalantly. No, we come to church with an expectation to make a withdrawal from the supply of the spirit of God. 
When we come to church, when we gather in outdoor services, we, we, we don't just casually come to church. Uh, this is why we, we lean into the worship. This is why we lean into the prayer. We lean into the study of God's word because we want to make a withdrawal. We want to make a withdrawal from the supply of the spirit of Christ. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? We gather in faith. We connect online together in faith. We gather in anticipation of the spirit of the Lord to move. We gather in expectation of the power of God to be ignited amongst us. Last Sunday at our outdoor service, we had a powerful demonstration of the power of God. That morning at about 7.30 in the morning, I got a phone call. And I usually don't answer my phone that early in the morning, but the Lord prompted me to answer it. And on the other end was a gentleman from Long Beach who told me that he had been watching our outdoor services online. And he said he sensed, he sensed a, a, a presence of the power of the Holy Spirit in so much that he needed the Holy Spirit that we have. He needed to, to be impacted by the present or the supply of the Holy Spirit that we had. And he said, Brian, I was so, I was so excited when I learned that you guys were local because I thought you guys were in another state. And so I told this guy, I said, listen, you come to service, come to 1130 service. And did you know that brother came an hour early. You know why? Because he was hungry for the supply of the spirit of Christ. And at the end of my preaching that day, that brother surrendered his life to the Lord and he was breaking down in tears, sobbing underneath the supply of the spirit of God. You know why? Because he made a withdrawal by faith in the, uh, in the name of Jesus. And I posted some pictures up. I'm going to show you a picture right now of this of this believer, this brother, a uh, 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 crying underneath the power of God because supply. We we have a supply. Lastly, number three, what I want us to learn is that faith believes for big things. Faith believes for big things. In verse 28, it says of the sister, it says, for she thought as she was approaching Jesus, for she thought if I just touch his garments, if I just touch his garments, I will get well. Now, don't rush past that phrase. That's a powerful phrase right there. This sister had the audacity. She had the audacity, the hope, the faith. The radical belief enough to think that if I could just touch him, if I could just touch him, I'm going to be made whole. I'm going to be healed. You got to remember she was suffering for 12 years. Yet she had this radical belief to, to, to believe big. She believed that if she just touched the clothes of Jesus, she would be healed. That's big. That's big time. She believed. That just by touching Jesus, that the power of Jesus will do for her what doctors could not do. That's big. She believed if she just touched the, the clothes of Jesus, not even the body of Jesus, but the clothes of Jesus. If she just touched the clothes of Jesus, she would, she, the power of God would do for her what money could not do. What all her connections in the world could not do. That's big. She believed big. And beloved, friends, Chapel of Change, all throughout the scripture, all throughout the Bible, I see people believing God for big things. I see people believing God for big things. Joshua believed that God would, would, would stop the sun in its place. That's big. Elijah believed that God would pour down a rain fire down from heaven. That's big. Peter believed that Jesus would empower him to walk on water. That's big. 
I want to remind us that Christianity is all about the incredible, the incredible. Christianity is all about God making the impossible possible in our lives. And I want to elevate your faith together uh, today. I want to elevate your faith together to, to, together that Jesus said in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, anything is possible for someone who has faith. Anything is possible for someone who has faith. Don't lowball God, beloved. Don't lowball God. Are you seeking God's help for something? Are you seeking God's help for your life? Pray big. Think big. Believe big. I'm going to say that again. I want to elevate your faith. Pray big. Think big. Believe big. Your life is going to be in proportion of how big you believe. Believe little, you get little. Believe weak, you get weak. Believe big, and then you put yourself in a position to, to experience big things from God. I know that many of your faith has been discouraged and I know that some of your faith have been shattered, but I'm trying to get you to another level. I'm trying to get you to experience an unstoppable faith. And it starts with elevating your belief, elevating, uh, elevating your belief. When is the last time we ask God for something big, something huge, something bodacious? Listen, we serve a big time God. We serve a bodacious God that invites us to believe for big things. In Psalms chapter 2 verse 8, God told David, only ask and I will give you the nations as your inheritance, the whole earth as your possession. That's big. Many of us, beloved, I believe, Need to repent from lowballing God. Need to repent from lowballing God. I'm convinced that oftentimes God looks down at our prayers and He says, That's it? That's all you're gonna ask me for? Don't you know who I am? Don't you know? What I can do, don't you know what I say when it comes to prayer? Listen, we serve a big time God. I think back on the life of Chapel of Change, and I'm amazed at at every point in the life of Chapel of Change, God has always done bigger than what we were able, where you were able to believe. Always done bigger than what we were able to believe. When we, I think back to our grand opening nine years ago, we were believing for 400 people to attend, and that was a big number. We believed for 400 people to attend, and guess what? 700 people attended our grand opening. God always outdid what we can believe. We never thought that Chapel of Change would expand and grow to be five campuses in five different cities. That's bigger than what we were even thinking about because we serve a big time God. I want to encourage you as I close this morning, I want to encourage you with Ephesians chapter three, verse 20. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Beloved, as we study together unstoppable faith, we learn that God responds to faith. He responds to faith. We learned that we are to believe for big things, we are to believe for big things, and we learn that faith appropriates the power and the promises of God. I want to take this opportunity to pray for you, that God strengthen your faith. Wherever you're at in your journey with him, I'm going to pray that God strengthen your faith this morning. If you can, lift up your hands toward that screen, and I'm going to pray, pray for you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, 
I pray for all those that are lifting up their hands today. And Father God, you know the state of their faith, Father God. And I pray that today in the name of Jesus, as they hear the sound of my voice, I pray, Father God, that the anointing go through that monitor and touch their hearts, that the anointing of the living God, the Holy Spirit, the supply of the Holy Spirit, strengthen their faith, Father God. I pray that you strengthen their faith today, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you touch their faith to come alive into this unstoppable type of faith. Strengthen their faith. Energize their faith today, Father God. Jumpstart their faith today, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We rebuke the spirit of discouragement. We rebuke the spirit of doubt. In the name of Jesus. And we release Unstoppable faith, Hallelujah. unstoppable faith in Jesus name. Amen and amen and amen. Well, beloved, I, I pray and I'm, I'm confident that you are encouraged by that word. And I want to challenge you to walk this week in unstoppable faith. At this time, we're going to transition uh, to prepare our hearts for our tithes and offerings. If you're part of Chapel of Change or if you just want to give back to God, listen, we cha we're challenging God's people to go through this year practicing the principle of tithing. What is tithing? Tithing is where we give back to God 10% of all that he's given to us. Bare minimum, 10%. In fact, if we're going to live a generous lifestyle, we're going to be given more than 10%. But if you haven't started tithing yet, I want to encourage you to start there. You cannot outgive God. And through living a generous lifestyle, we position ourselves uh, to, to receive the blessing of God. But not only that, we empower the work of God the Lord. So as you prepare your best gift unto the Lord, a couple announcements to make. If you want to give after we dismiss with a blessing, go to our webpage and give on our webpage. Hit the giving button, follow the instructions. You can do that. If you want to give through mail, mail your uh, offering to our Paramount location. And if you want to give in person, you, you still have time to come and give on person. Listen, we have five outdoor services on the weekend, Saturday night at 5 p.m. in the city of Whittier, 9 a.m. in Carson, 9.30 in Paramount, 11.30 in Paramount, and 5 p.m. in the city of Carson. You can come out in person, outdoors, worship the Lord, and give your offering uh, at that time. I also want to encourage you, if you have not downloaded our phone app, uh, go to our webpage on the front page. It gives you the instructions, whether you have an Android or an, uh, or an iPhone. Um, that phone app is critical for us to stay connected. It has our latest sermons, uh, alerts. We send you messages uh, and you get updates. And we want to make sure that we are connected during these difficult days. If you want to join our my uh, text group, my text message group, I want to send you texts um, throughout the week, encouragement as well as updates with the church. Text your name to 562-393-7330. We'll put that on the screen right now. That's 562-393-7330. And don't forget, in a couple of weeks, we're having baptisms at our Carson campus. If you want to get baptized, text baptism to that same number, 562-393-7330, and we will celebrate water baptism with you. This is Pastor Brian along with all the staff at Chapel of Change and it is a joy to connect with you online uh, in worship, prayer, and the study of God's Word. At this time, I'm going to dismiss with a blessing. It's our tradition to end with a blessing from the Lord. So if you're able, I want to invite you to lift up your hands unto the Lord and we'll pronounce a blessing in dismissal. Lift up your hands unto the Lord. In the name of the Father who loves you with an endless love, in the name of the Son who died that you could live, and in the name of the Holy Spirit who strengthens you to walk in unstoppable faith, may you go this week with the protection and the blessing of the Lord. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. This is Pastor Brian. We love you. And until we meet again, go in the favor of the Lord.